Yo, what should I play? All these decks in the format, the way How can I choose without making mistakes? Every day Jack and my channel is great Dad, give me some list about decks that you don't wanna miss From Metagross, Garbador, to Laurentis Nothing will ever be better than this Here, you get what you want Hungry for decks? Hit your ass drop Leave a comment to make me sure that you watched And more videos will drop Ha! Zoro work hits real hard The CGY and the ice will fly With we'll Vespic when we are sure a win And so much more, so let me begin Yeah! Episode 125 the top 20 decks, Guardians Rising. Ha! <laughs> What's up YouTube, it's Zapdos TCG here and thanks again for watching our TCG video on my channel. Today we are gonna check out the best 20 decks that I personally think are really great in the competitive scene at the moment, meaning from Primal Clash all the way to Guardians Rising. So this is the standard format and there are some exclusions in this deck which I'm gonna talk about right now, that's on the list here. Things that I don't have on the TCG online program or I, I never tested before. Decks like these contain Xerneas Break with Brilliant Arrow, so that is an honorable mention. We have Lapras GX Water Box, I tested that before but I don't have it at the TCG Online program anymore. We have Mega Gardevoir EX, also a really great deck with the, uh, yeah, what attack is it? Desper Ray, the dual type Mega Gardevoir, really great deck. Eveltal EX, Taurus GX Drampa, also one of these uh, interesting decks with the Ultra of the Moon, I also don't have it. And uh, that's it about, about uh, the, the decks I'm not gonna review today, so if you are looking for a review of that, there should be a yeah, deck review on the channel somewhere, definitely check it out. And for those of you that are only interested in informational videos, well, you can check out uh, the uh, banned cards, all the banned cards throughout the years, or maybe uh, you're more interested in the worst Pokemon cards ever printed, well, those videos should be in the description below, it's really nice content for you you guys to check out if you're not into the competitive scene but if you're into the competitive scene you're in for a treat because you're gonna get loaded with uh, deck lists here and uh, to, to start things off these decks are not in a particular order here and there I'm just gonna mention if it's a tier 3, tier 2 or tier 1 deck. So a uh, tier 1 deck is uh, the best out there. That way, that means that you definitely have to be careful for it uh, because it wins a lot of tournaments. Okay. Now we're gonna go in uh, the alphabetical order here because uh, there's a lot of decks I want to re review and I cannot place them on any number here and there. So we're gonna start off with Alolan Ninetales. So as you see, I traded away one Alolan Ninetales, actually two of them. So this deck contains four Vulpix and three Alolan Ninetales. This is the main attacker of the deck. I already talked about all these decks in detail before in the uh, yeah, detailed episode, so definitely check them on the channel if you want to learn more. So in this uh, particular deck list, we are focusing on the rough seas to heal off ourselves and uh, yeah, we also have that Ice Pad GX to put all our damage on the opponent for just a double cardless energy. The inclusion here of Manaphy makes it so everybody with a Water Energy has free retreat. Really awesome uh, because yeah, uh, this Red GX has a huge amount of retreat cost. This is used mainly for the Resistance Blizzard, uh, that way it's uh, not affected by damage. Uh, and effects by uh, Pokemon EXs that will attack Regi so uh, EXs are still kind of dominant, uh, not that dominant like before, but they are yeah, still in the format. We have things like Rayquaza EX that actually won a tournament lately, so uh, you still have to be careful of certain EXs, so that's why it's in there. The Articuno, Delta Plus, the uh, Ancient Trait, really great to get an extra prize card if you knock something out with Articuno. Nowadays, with Choice Band, it's not that hard to achieve that. Uh, yeah, out of nowhere, we retreat with the Manaphy and get yourself an extra prize card, so that's why it's in here. Uh, what uh, you want to know here is that there are uh, four Sycamores in this deck. Definitely, because uh, yeah, we want to draw uh, as many cards as we, as we can. And if we get a Water Energy in the discard, it's great. That way we can get it back with the uh, Aqua Patch. Aqua Patch, a card released in Guardians Rising. With that, we can attach it, uh, a Water Energy from the discard to one of our benched Pokemon. So uh, things you might be careful here is uh, the trainer's mails. Uh, I don't think trainer mail is still that uh, sufficient enough just because Gobbler is in the format. Maybe replace that maybe with a Bridget or something else. We have a 2-2 line of artillery drawing cards is always great. In the past the water box had Shayna but now we are running the artillery. It's only, it only gives up one prize card and it's awesome like that. Gonna go in detail here with the energy count because uh, yeah you cannot see anything uh, because uh, yeah uh, on the bottom screen is not covered here so we have four DCEs and then uh, eight water energies also gotta go with the trainers in detail here we see an escape rope a rescue stretcher always great to get your resources hex maniac awesome to uh, get yourselves that uh, ability lock going on so this is the deck a little of nine tails I would put it at a tier 2 deck 
it's not a tier one deck just because uh, not not always top cuts at tournaments. So that's why it's only a tier two. Really great uh, against the um, Volcanian matchup. Also the Ice Pad GX. Really great. If you want to play a Lowland Nine Tails, there's also another way to play a Lowland Nine Tails. I'm uh, I'm gonna go here with the Sidui Lowland Nine Tails. Why is this deck great? Well, that's what you're gonna see here today. Well, uh, there's a couple of decks in here. It's all about the sniping with this deck. We have the Sidui GX with Feather Arrow. Once during our turn, we put two damage counter on one of our opponent's Pokemon. If we have multiple ones out, we can use it uh, yeah, in a row using maybe two of those abilities in combination with the Ice Blade. With the DCE, we deal 50 damage to one of our opponent's Pokemon. So the big idea about this deck is spreading around damage. Even the Flying Flip Tapu Koko promo card helps with that. And they all need DCE, so it's awesome. We spread around damage early game. And then we finish things off by devolving everyone with Miraculous Shine with the Espeon EX. So this is a great deck all around. Has won a couple of tournaments and uh, top cutted a lot of regionals. So you should uh, think about using this deck if you still have the, yeah, your Force of Giant Plans, of course. Because this is still in the standard format and without the uh, Force of Giant Plans, the Decidueyes won't come as easy. So this deck, uh, also note wording as uh, the special charge, we uh, are not running Valplume with the uh, Decidueye in this version, so we can run special charge to get back our DCE, since we only run 7 energies, 3 grass energies, and then 4 DCEs. Uh, of course, Tapu Lele has to give a, yeah, a shout out here. Uh, this uh, Tapu Lele with Wonder Tag gets us everything we possibly want for our supporter of the turn. And since we have uh, our sniping capabilities, we can finish things off because we can get the Lysander if need be. And that way we can uh, destroy stuff with Razor Leaf because that is also in the deck. No choice bans in this deck because sniping is all the way to go and uh, we devolve with Espeon. So that's everything you want to know about this deck. We already have covered two decks. Now we're gonna yeah, go with the Sidui in line. I'm gonna talk about Darkrai in a second here. We have uh, this. Uh, I have a challenge request. Uh, sorry, man. I uh, don't have time. Uh, yeah, Silver Swarm, uh, Swordsman. I cannot uh, battle right now. I'm making a video. So if you're seeing this, uh, yeah, you just know that uh, it wasn't uh, personal. Okay. We have the Sidui with Vileplume. This is actually really great. It did really well at Melbourne at the international tournaments before Guardians Rising. And uh, now it is uh, a little bit better. We have the Flying Flip Tapu Koko with Free Retreat. Also needs a DCE. We can get the damage spread going on early game. As mentioned, Espeon EX is in the deck as well because everybody is playing evolution cards. All the GXs or most of them are great evolution Pokemon. With Espeon, we devolve them and boom, we get ourselves some prizes in awkward situations. Okay, well, there's a 2 2 2 line of Valplume in here. Why? Because item block is overpowered. If we can get it out on turn one together with Forest of Giant Plants, which is not that hard to do. Uh, uh, because we do have four trainer mail that item lock is in play from turn one it does have a kind of a terrible matchup against garbador because it does use a lot of items but that in the long run your opponent cannot use ultra ball to get our get get himself the um, cards that he wants like uh, the garbador for the turn so that is great uh, yeah, what else you want to know about this deck is that uh, there's Shaman in here for consistency reasons. We want to draw as many cards as possible and get our stuff out as quickly as we can to just start using the Feather Arrows, as explained with Ninetales. In this particular deck, we are focusing on item lock and uh, keeping things stuck in the active position thanks to Lysander and then spreading around damage. A little bit of uh, a different approach here. But also, again, a top deck. I haven't uh, talked about, I, with the, the Sidui Ninetales, I would place it at tier 1. The Sidui Valplume, I would place it at tier 2. I think that the Ninetales version is uh, a bit better because it uh, did, uh, uh, yeah, significantly better at uh, tournaments. Next up, we have the Darkrai EX Dragonair deck. Also a tier 2 deck, not a tier 1 deck. I uh, did not top cut at that many uh, regionals throughout uh, yeah, the Guardians Rising period. But it is still a great deck. What do you want to know about this deck? Well, we have our main attacker here, the bad boy himself, Darkrai EX. Dark Pulse deals 20 damage for each uh, Darkness Energy attached to all of our Pokemon. We could also run Darkrai with something else, which I'm gonna talk about later, which is Turbo Darkrai, but in this variant, we are uh, attaching double Dragon Energies, and uh, that way we deal more damage. Renegade Pulse are really great. It cannot get attacked by Mega Evolution, so Rayquaza will not hit this guy. Chaos Wheel prevents them from attaching Special Energies. Also really great. Also, uh, the Stadium cards and Tool cards are uh, prevented from attached, uh, yeah, from uh, being slapped on the field. So that is awesome. It's all about this attack, Dragon Swish. With Dragon Swish, we can use that attack, and during our next turn, we, we can attach as many energies as we want. 
during that turn. So uh, the rules don't apply. One at attachment is not the case here anymore. We attach everything that we want together with Professor's Letter, uh, a Shaman EX here, and uh, yeah, she even Tapulele to get ourselves the Sycamore for the turn. We'll get ourselves incredibly a lot of energies uh, on the field, and that way we uh, actually one shot everything. And that's how the deck is functioned. Also, two choice bands really need to use. And uh, there's also two float zone in here just uh, to get ourselves out of active uh, starting positions. If we don't have the Ultra of the Moon, which are three copies in this deck, so this deck is mainly revolved around using Dragon Switch and then attaching a bazillion amount of energies to get yourselves a ton of knockouts. Okay. That was a mouthful, now we are going to the tier 1 deck that is doing so well that it does not even need a mentioning. It's himself, Garbodor. Garbodor with Trashalance has been tearing the format up ever since its release. Trashalance deals 20 damage for each item card in your opponent's discard pile. Together with Choice Band you're hitting a huge amount of numbers and your opponent has to be careful to play their item cards because otherwise they will be used against them. Together with Team Magma Secret Base, we get ourselves a sweet combo where Drompa can attack on the second turn with a min minimum of 150 damage. Slap a choice band, we have 180 damage. There are a few techs in here, like Sudowoodoo, preventing your opponent from uh, having more than four bench Pokemon, which is great. That way they're stuck and uh, they have an uh, empty space that they thought they had, but then it's gone. Tapu Koko, Flying Flip. Yeah, it's almost in every deck that uses DCE, it cannot get an exclusion in this deck. Flying Flip is just way too good not to use early game. That way uh, Garbodor has an easier time to get to one hit KOs. As a bonus, we have the Garbotoxin in here as well. Garbotoxin is great to shut down all the abilities once Garbodor has a, uh, yeah, a tool card attached. It's a float zone or a choice band, the choice is up to you at that po point in time. But do note, it has 3 retreat costs, so uh, yeah, you have to be careful here. Unless your opponent plays Ultra of the Moon, that way hey, they help you out. Espeon again, has seen a lot of uh, yeah, attacks and uh, I love Espeon, that's why it's also in this deck. It also can attack sometimes with that uh, Psy Shock dealing 70 damage. Uh, what else can we talk about? There's Choice Band, of course, uh, with Guardians Rising, why not run Choice Band? We're gonna check out the energies here, uh, we have uh, the uh, 11 energies, 7 Psychic for the Garbodors, uh, the, uh, and maybe for other Pokemon as well. Maybe another inclusion here is running the, uh, the Bunnel Bee in the deck, Bunnel Bee is fun. Uh, if you don't know Bunnel Bee, I'm gonna just uh, put it in here, that way you are knowing what the card does. This Bunnel Bee has the Burrow Attack or the Rotai Tyler and uh, it means that it can shuffle cards from the discard back in the deck or discard the top card of your opponent's deck. With the Omega Barrage Ancient Trade we can attack twice so we can have a nice combination like that. Okay, uh, for the trainer cards here, uh, I was mentioning Rescue Stretcher, Super Rod, really great recovery cards, Hacks Mania, and Delinquent, definitely Delinquent, just to get yourself the, in the situation where your opponent has to discard their item cards and then they're saying like, oh damn it, now you one shot me. There are four floats soon in this deck, just because we want to get out of the active position and we don't run Ultra of the Moon, so <laughs> yeah, four uh, of them is great. And uh, that's basically the deck. You can also run this with Espeon EX, I'm gonna mention this guy as well. Don't have it on the TCG online program, so we're gonna show it. I actually made a video about it, so uh, you should definitely check it out if you haven't already. Or let's just check this out. Uh, yeah, we have Espeon GX. Uh, you can just scrap uh, certain cards in here, like the tech cards, and put an Espeon GX with EVs. It also works with Garbodor really well, since you use Psybeam, and then your opponent is confused, and getting out of the uh, yeah, confusion special condition it is not that easy without using item cards, so that's why I'm mentioning Espeon GX as well, a great variant to the Garbodor deck. Talking about Garbodor decks, we have a ton more Garbodor decks. This is a, a variant here that you want to see here is uh, the Garbodor Trevenant deck. A friend of mine uses this in the local league, so uh, he is having a lot of fun with it. The reasoning behind this little deck is that uh, we have Trevenant, Poltergeist dealing 30 damage for each trainer card you find in your opponent's hand. This can be crucial when you you have your Garbodor out and they're saying like, ooh, I'm not gonna waste my items in my hand and just gonna, yeah, just not discard them, put them in my hand and out of nowhere, with the Forest of Giant Plants of course, we get a, uh, yeah, a Trevenant out of nowhere and BAM, we destroy them uh, because this can deal up to a lot of damage Poltergeist. Let's say your opponent has five cards in the hand and uh, yeah, four of them happen to be, yeah, trainer cards. That way we're already dealing 120 damage. Add that with your choice band. So uh, we're dealing nice numbers here. Uh, also, Field Blower is needed uh, because, yeah, we blow away the opponents with uh, the uh, Float Stones. Uh, we want to trap something in the active position, maybe with Lysander. We can uh, slap down uh, that five, uh, Field Blower to get rid of uh, maybe Fighting Fury Bells that are still alive somehow. <laughs> 
We are running Bridget, really great supporter in that combination with Tapu Lele. We use Tapu Lele, get our Bridget. Our entire field is filled with our uh, little basics that we evolve the next turn. So uh, similar to the Garbodor list, but then with the, uh, yeah, the attack cards, we have uh, the Trevenant as a second main attacker. How many float zones are in here? That is the question I will definitely get. And the float zone number here is only two. Why is that? We have the Altar of the Moon. Yeah, that's right. The Altar of the Moon is here and here as well. And we have Olympia together with two of those Tapu Lele. So we're kind of fine under the retreat position. And why? Nothing can get stuck in the active position. Slap a DCE and it can attack. Or slap a Psychic Energy, it can attack. So. Yeah, great deck all around. I would place this as a maybe tier 2, maybe tier 3 deck. It's not doing that well, but it's still a, a nice little fun deck to test out. Of course, the Drumpa variant is a tier 1 deck. You should be careful of that deck if you are, are still not familiar of facing Garbler decks. Another tier 1 deck here is the Zoroark deck together with, yeah, Drumpa. As mentioned, the Drumpa combo here with Team Magma Secret Base. We slap some damage on one of our own Pokemon. Then we use Berserk for bazillion damage to get ourselves some great knockouts. Zoroark Break. If you have not heard about this card, check out episode 124, the episode before this. Talked about this deck a lot. So all these video, all these uh, decks actually have their own video, uh, their own separate video uh, with the entire deck list in the description and stuff. So definitely check those videos out if you want to learn more information. But this is just to get yourself an idea if you're new and you want to see what is being played in the standard format. Okay, Zoroark Break. It deals foul play. You can choose one of your opponent's attacks and you can use it as this attack, but you don't need the necessary energies at all. Let's say you're facing Solgaleo GX. Well, for one energy, we also do the Sun Seal Strike. Haha, <laughs> yeah, so good like that. Also, the stand in, really great ability to get out of the active position when you're stuck. Once during our turn, if this Pokemon is on our bench, we uh, may switch it to the active position. Together with Floatstone, we have a great combo. Also, gonna check. The, uh, the energies here, only six darkness energies, uh, the double Chorus energies are the precious ones, that's why we're also running special charge. And has hammer is fun, just to get uh, in a mirror match, get those DC, D DC is knocked off. Again, Bridget for the setup, uh, we use that uh, in the first turns to get ourselves the bench that we want. Fan Club is also in here, uh, the Fan Club uh, Shaman combo is something I really like, uh, so that's why it's in here. With the Fan Club, we can put the Pokemon in the hand, not directly on the bench. Teammate, really great to get there, your necessary puzzle in time. And let's say uh, one of our Pokemon got knocked out and we're in a tough position. Well, we get ourselves the Zoroark Break together with a Choice Band or an Energy or, or something else for that matter. And boom, we're back in the game getting our knockout. And yeah, we're back. Uh, three Choice Bands and two Float Stones. Okay, this is a tier one deck, has been winning regional, so you should be careful of Zoroark. It's really good. Now to a tier three deck, but it's actually really great. It has uh, not been seen a lot of play but it's so much fun to use. We have Excadrill together with Delmice. If you don't know what Delmice does, for each Delmice on the field, we deal 10 more damage with our metal types. Because Excadrill is a metal type and it has the Omega Barrage, as I mentioned before, that ancient trade makes it so we can attack twice. Let's say we have four Delmice on the bench. That way, Math Claw deals the 90 damage and we can attack twice. Yeah, we hit the numbers 180, so this deck it's really great, tearing up a lot of opponents that are weak to metal. Let's say Sylveon GX is, it's, it's, yeah, it just gets demolished by this deck. Sylveon GX, also a deck we're gonna feature later. Cobalion, nice little fun deck with Revenge Blash. For each, uh, yeah, your prize card your opponent uh, took, we deal an additional 30 damage with a base 30 damage, so that can hit up to a lot of damage in the late game. Also, Quick Guard prevents all damage done to it by uh, basic Pokemon, so it could be great if you're facing Volcanion and you want to have yourself a stall turn, and that way your uh, Cobalion is there. Yeah, we have Metal Energies, we have DCEs, and uh, also Field Blower getting rid of that. Uh, there's uh, Skyfield in here, of course, because let's say, oh wow, we have a full bench of Dalmice and a Shaman, that way we cannot bench any more Drill Burst to set them up, so that's why Skyfield is in here. Bridget is uh, one of the more seen cards when Guardians Rising hit the field. Everybody is uh, yeah, adapting to the Garbler style of play where you don't have to use a lot of items. Don't use uh, four Ultra Balls in a row. Don't ever do that. Use Bridget instead. Get your bench set up and bang. You don't use a lot of items but still have your setup. Okay, uh, as mentioned, yeah, the tool cards of choice. The best tool cards ever, Choice Band and Float Stone. Uh, yeah, we are moving on here. This is a tier 3 deck or maybe tier 2. Definitely check it out if you're having fun. It's a budget deck. If you don't want to run the Shamans, you can also run Orangu, so kind of fun. Uh, but be careful though, it's uh, gonna get maybe rotated out because uh, the card is uh, kind of old. 
Uh, we talked about Garbodor Trevenant. Uh, yeah, that is uh, the deck we already featured. Now, one of my favorites, Greninja Break. I would put this as a tier two deck, maybe a tier one deck because it has some really great matchups across the board. It destroys Volcanion, it destroys Metagross GX, which is one of the more hyped decks uh, of the uh, Guardians Rising uh, yeah, on format. <laughs> it's not Guardians Rising on, but when Guardians Rising hit the field, people started playing Metagross and it's kind of getting out of hand because Metagross is a great type or actually a great deck to have at the moment, but Greninja kind of counters with the Shadow Stitching. If you don't know what Greninja does, here, uh, get enlightened. We have the Break, which used the giant water shuriken. We discard a water energy from the hand. We deal 60 damage to one of our opponent's Pokemon, sniping. And that uh, 60 damage is a lot because most weak ba basics have 60 HP. Think about Alolan Vulpix, think about Baldum, think about yeah other Pokemon like Rowlet. Uh, almost all weak basics, even Eevee, ha have a really low HP and that giant water shuriken definitely helps us out. So how do we get this even to work? Because a break of a stage two, yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard. Well, we have water duplicates of the Froga there. Yeah, talking about water, I'm gonna drink some uh, water because uh, my voice is getting a little bit pitch. Okay, and with that out of the way, we have the Froga there. Frogadare has the attack Water Duplicates. Uh, if you use that attack, we search our deck for three Frogadares and put them directly on the bench. So we don't need to evolve from our little Frokies. Uh, only one has to evolve and then boom, we're off. Next turn, we evolve to Greninjas and uh, yeah, seeing how great Greninja is, it's a really great deck. Shadow Stitching deals 40 damage. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, they are ability, ability blocked. So that is awesome. Really great uh, big threats like uh, Metagross GX that uses Geotech system. So, that is awesome. Also, Moonlight Slash deals an awesome amount of damage. You can deal 60 damage or you can deal 80 damage and return the water energy back to your hand. Really nice synergy with the break. That way we can discard the energy later and use a giant water shuriken. So it hits the numbers really well. Let's say we have a Moonlight Slash for 80 damage. We slap a choice band, 110 damage. We discard a water energy with giant water shuriken and boom, suddenly we deal 170 damage and that for two energies. One that we discard, one that we attach. Really great combo. Don't sleep on Greninja just yet. Talonflame is in here. If we happen to start with it, it's great. Free retreat, gets the ability Arrow Blitz uh, that can search our deck for two cards with an additional 40 damage. Awesome. Why is Tapu Lele in here? I will definitely get that comment, but uh, here's my explanation to this. If we use Tapu Lele, we can get ourselves the Wally. And with Wally, I'm gonna show it right here. With Wally, we can evolve on the first turn that we benched. With that, we can get ourselves the first turn water duplicates and you get the point. Also in the late game, it's nice to uh, use that Tapu Lele to get ourselves the Lysander to knock something out because we only run one Lysander. Why is that? There's just not that much room in the deck to get a consistent list. So there's only one copy, we do snipe. Why is this deck great? Well, it runs on Silent Labs. Why is Silent Lab great? Look at this, each player, uh, yeah, basic Pokemon has no abilities, bam! No Tapu Leles, no Shamans, no Hoopas, everything gets blocked, so that's why it's good. That way it gives us, gives us the time to set up at our own pace. We run two Dive Balls together with four Ultra Ball. Why Ultra Ball and not more Dive Balls to get our Tapu Lele first turn, of course. All right, uh, what else has to be talked about here? We have Max Potion to heal off all the damage. Fisherman, you don't see that in every deck. To get ourselves the energies straight to the hand, really great to snipe around. So that's why it's in here, two copies. Definitely don't want this card to be prized because we only run eight energy. So that is Greninja Break for you. If you like playing with a yeah, really nice uh, Varier Battle deck that uh, snipes a lot, Greninja Break might be the deck for you. Only weakness it has, it's weak to grass. And grass is a huge type. There's Decidueye, there's Vespiquin, uh, there's uh, yeah, Lorantis, there's a lot of uh, yeah, grass types, even Tapu Bulu, the new one. Next up. Okay, uh, yeah, the, the Greninja break I already talked about. Now we're going to Zygarde Lycanroc, or actually the pure Lycanroc, the Zygarde Lycanroc will come later. This is a Lycanroc deck. Lycanroc GX is great with Bloodthirsty Eyes. It's a build in Lysander. Lysander is a powerful uh, supporter, but this is an ability, which means we can use, still use the supporter of the turn. We can target something and uh, his attacks are kind of really great. Uh, we can have the Dangerous Rogue, 50 damage for each bench Pokemon your opponent has. Think about it, uh, the Lycanroc GX is also really comparable uh, with the Raichu. If we uh, pair it with Raichu, we have uh, some synergy here. We deal more damage depending on our bench size with Raichu and with this card, we deal more damage depending on our opponent's bench size. But this is not a Raichu variant. This is uh, the one with Carbink. You can also play the Carbink Break in here, which is might be even better, but I uh, yeah forgot to include it for some particular reason because this deck list is a little bit old. It uses a lot, still a lot of atoms here. We see Trainer's Mail. 
Uh, I don't, I'm not saying these decks are perfect, but uh, this should give you an idea of how the decks run. So uh, with the evolutions, we uh, uh, try to turn our Lycan Rock GX into the type that we want it to be, uh, meaning fire, water, or lightning. That way we hit super effective damage, and this is huge. There's also a Lycan Rock GX uh, midday form just for crunch. With that, we discard uh, yeah, energies from our opponent's active Pokemon together with Crushing Hammer and Enhanced Hammer. We have a deadly combo. The uh, thing to talk about: Brooklyn Hill. Awesome card to get yourself a fighting Pokemon on the bench. Parallel City, still a nice card to reduce damage from grass type Pokemon. Wow, our, uh, yeah, our screen gets a little bit uh, thrown out of the, the balance here, but that does not even matter. Let's just put it back in perspective here. Okay, we are back <laughs> with uh, the Parallel City. We reduce damage done to fire with uh, fire types, grass types and water types to us, so that can be really great in certain points. Uh, also, uh, reducing the, da the bench size to three of our opponents can also be crucial. Team Flare Grunt and then of course three Choice Bands and two Float Zones. So, uh, as always, some of uh, the numbers I use for decks like these. Definitely check this fighting deck. It's a tier 3 deck, but a lot of fun to discard energies. Next, Mega Rokoiza. I uh, put this at tier 2 because Sudowoodoo is around. It's all Sudowoodoo is uh, definitely in this deck as well. Why is Sudowoodoo in this deck? Well, uh, that is uh, an interesting thing I want to say here. Sudowoodoo is in the deck because that way your opponent can only have four benched Pokemon while you can use uh, Skyfield and they cannot abuse it. A really great combo. Also running Tree Shaman, maybe add it up to four if you like that. The great thing about this is we're using two Mellows nowadays. With that, we can put something of the deck on the top of our deck and uh, just throw it out with Shaman or Oranguru or uh, maybe the new Unknowns. There are four Unknowns in this deck. It has a ton of draw power, usually we would, we would rely on Trainer's Mail, but since Garbodor is a huge thing nowadays, we uh, yeah, are running the unknown for draw power. Why are we running Lightning Energies? Well, you can just pick an energy type of your choice, everything runs on cards. Maybe a Fighting type would be better in this situation since we do run so the Voodoo could be efficient. But, but yeah, it, uh, I changed my Jolton G, uh, EX Mega Rokoiza deck for this video. Maybe uh, we're gonna switch these things up and add in Fighting Energies, the choice is up to you. Uh, Dragonite EX is in here to recover our Pokemon, Hoopa EX of course, first turn getting Shaman EX's and uh, our Rayquaza's out, awesome combo, Rescue Stretcher is new, and uh, for the rest we have Olympia, and Tapu Lele can get yourself the Olympia if we want it, so there's one Tapu Lele in here. So Mega Rayquaza, still a viable deck in the format. Okay, we're moving on here, we have Mega Mewtwo, well, Mega Mewtwo is now a tier 3 deck, and why is that? Mega Mewtwo is weak to Psychic. Yeah, that's the only reason. <laughs> yeah, Garbodor eats it alive, but we are also running a Garbodor as well. So this is a little split between Mega Mewtwo and Garbodor, so uh, our split attackers. The Shrine of Memories is neat to uh, just um, use the damage change. If we are got damaged by something other than Psychic types, we manage, we manage to survive. And then with the regular Mewtwo EX yeah, with Shrine of Memories, we can use all those uh, a huge HP of Mega Mewtwo, then damage change, poof, all the damage goes to your opponent. Similar like Ice Pad GX. So, what else is here to talk about? Tapu Lele can, uh, in uh, certain situations, heal off all our damage as well with the Tapu Cure GX. Bridget, of course, setting up is always nice. You have to be careful of the Spirit Links because uh, sometimes your opponent will use a Field Blower and you will have to manually evolve. So that's why Megas got dropped down a bit instead of, uh, unless the Mega Rayquaza, that one can evolve on the first turn, which is kind of OP, but yeah, it's Mega Rayquaza, what do you do? There is four DCEs and eight Psychic Energy. So this is all, also another fun deck. If you like playing with Garbler and you want to play something entirely different, then play Mega Mewtwo, but be careful, your Mega Mewtwo's will get one-shotted by everything. Next up, Megalagros. This is a, a recent deck and this is really doing really well at all tournaments. Also another little fun deck card is Oricorio, if I can even pronounce it. Uh, this guy can also be included in the deck in the late game. We have one Dalmice to get our extra damage output. Uh, with the choice bet we are hitting uh, 190 in combination with Dalmice. But it's all about Metagross GX. Uh, we have Algorithm GX, get yourself five cards in the hand. But yeah, your opponent can use N. Talked about this card before. So as mentioned in every uh, deck video, I already reviewed every single deck. So uh, there's no need to go in detail about this. But G Giga Hammer is the, tech, uh, the attack of choice. One Vulpix is in here. Why not? Beacon can help out to get ourselves the uh, Pokemon that we need. Also, it's a really simple deck. We are get, trying to get out as many Metagrosses as possible. Use the Giga Hammer in combination with Choice Band to get ourselves knockouts. Uh, we cannot use it next turn, that why, that's why we manually retreat and attach all the energies back with Geotech system. If we get two Metagrosses out, it's awesome. Also, uh, there's Olympia if we need to switch and Bridget, of course, shows its face once again. 
All right, let's save this deck up. Max Potion is also a huge one and Rare Candy. Metagross is definitely check it out. A lot of fun, but it is weak to fire, so Fulking and kind of beats it up. Next up, this deck is crazy. Only running four basics, it is EV together with Sylveon. Sylveon, why is this deck such a nuisance? It's a disruption deck. With the Magical Ribbon, we can search our deck for three cards and put them directly in the hand. We don't even have to show it to our opponent and we have a solution for everything. We have four Crushing Hammers, discarding everything. We have four Team Flare Grunt, discarding more. We have uh, the Delinquent, getting our opponent's hand size to zero. We have Max Potion, healing off the damage uh, if, if we're getting low on HP. We can use Team Skull Grunt if they have energies in the hand. We can use Team uh, Rocket's Handiwork if they're almost decked out and puzz puzzles of time to reuse everything. Also, the Hex Maniac is need to have the ability block against certain decks like the uh, yeah Vika Voltop of Ruler, which I'm gonna talk about later. So uh, a really nice disruption deck, and uh, the thing you should know is that it runs nine fairy energies and two uh, DCEs. The reason why we're not running four DCEs is because we want to start with the fairy energy, get ourselves the energy evolution of Eevee. Boof, we are a Sylveon. How good is that? So a really great deck, it's only tier 2 at the moment, it's not doing that incredibly well because most cards just one-shot Sylveon, but it's still up there and it can be really good and uh, if you play it right or correctly. Talking about Tapu Bulu Vika Vault, here it is. One of the newer decks I enjoy playing with a lot. We have a, a 4 one tree line of the Vika Vault, maybe uh, running two uh, scatter rocks or whatever that's a Chara box. Could be better because yeah, item lock could be around, but then again in the rotation, there will be a rotation where Valplume is not legal and then we only need to rely on one of these because we have rare candy. Maybe running four rare candies is a bit more consistent, but yeah, I didn't find the room for it because we do run BS Seekers and a bunch of stuff. Brock's, Gr Brock's Grit is uh, one of those cards that is not in every deck. We shuffle six and any combination of Pokemon and basic energies back from the discard pile in our deck. Really great to get our energies back because uh, sometimes we discard everything with Tapu Bulu. With that Nature's Judgment we can get up to 180 damage but we have to discard all our energies which sometimes leads to energy problems and with that we can get them back in the deck. Together with another neat card that is not in every deck, Energy Recycler. Tapu Koko, a really fun card, just think about it, it makes me smile. Sometimes your opponent attaches a, yeah, usually, let's say you're up against a rogue Solgaleo GX deck, they're using the Soul Burst GX, getting a ton of energies onto them and we cannot one shot it with Tapu Voodoo. Out of nowhere, we get our Tapu Coco and boom, the Tapu Thunder GX get rid of it. Wow, this is so great and use that in a tournament, uh, not in a tournament, but uh, uh, with a friend uh, when we're testing decks, which it works out really well. Maybe Bridget is better in this deck besides the Pokemon Fan Club, so I'm definitely gonna replace this. Uh, where is it? Fan Club gets rid of... Uh, or immediately because the Bridget is way better in this deck. Bridge! Because we are a setup deck. A stage 2 deck definitely needs to think about Bridget. But what else is uh, noteworthy uh, to mention? We run regular switches and escape ropes just because we can get in the active position. And we're also running heavy ball. We're kind of heavy. We have a ton of retreat costs. So yeah, you know how that goes. We need switching cards. Also Olympia is in here. We can get it with Tapu Lele. And uh, the Skyla is neat. Maybe running two copies is even better. Skyla can get you the necessary rare candy or ultra ball or anything for that matter. So really great trainer card in this deck. We're gonna save it up. And uh, if you don't know, uh, yeah, they did not talk about this uh, at all. We have the strong charge of Vika Vault. This is the main reason that this deck is good. Once during a turn, you may search a deck for a grass and a lightning type and attach it to your Pokemon in any way you like. So uh, with that, we can get our ta Tapus build up. Uh, and uh, we start hitting for a huge amount of damage. We can even attack with Vika Volt if we're up against something that blocks basics. <laughs> okay, more Tapu Bulu action here. Today, in this uh, little list, we are running the Sun and Moon promo. Sunny Day, uh, Lorantis deals 20 more. We can deal 20 more damage for each Lorantis in play. If we get two of them out, this guy will rack things so immensely that you are saying like, wow, maybe this is a better Tapu Bulu version because we are only relying on a stage one. Also, two Lorantis GXs are in the deck. 11 grass energies, really simple like that, don't need special energies. We are discarding special energies though with the enhanced hammer. Field blower is in here for the sake of it, destroying uh, tool guards from our opponent is always great. Uh, 3 max elixirs, this is a more uh, heavier line on the max elixirs to get ourselves the energies uh, the early game. Uh, and the other version of the Tapu Bulu, we run Vika Vault, but this is using the Max Elixir and the Laurentis. Getting some Laurentises out with the Forest of Giant Plants. We don't even need Forest of Giant Plants, but sometimes it's crucial to bench a Fomantis and get yourself the Laurentis at the same turn. 
Other than that, the Aegis Paradise Conservation Area is a little bit better that way. Po Pokemon deal 30 less damage to our Lightning and Grass type Pokemon, so that is awesome. It's also in the other deck, the Vika Vault version. Uh, what else? We have the uh, Fan Club again here. Why are we running Fan Club? Because we also run Shaman. Uh, if you want, if you're not running Shaman, Bridget is always the better choice. Uh, what else? Let's just skip ahead here. We have one Fighting Fury Belt in combination with the Aegis Paradise Conservation Area. We have some incredibly bulk with Tapu Bulu. And uh, that is definitely awesome. It has a Jax move to heal off all the damage, so why not boost our HP with that card? We are uh, closing in to the end here. We still have uh, some decks more to go. We have Tapu Koko. This deck is good. It's still a tier, I would say a tier 3 deck, but it will get better soon. The uh, Tapu Bulu Laurentis deck is a tier, a tier 2 or tier 1, I am uh, having a hard time to uh, think about it. But the tier 1 decks here on my list are Zoroark Drampa, Drampa Garbodor or Espeon Garbodor, Vespiquen Zoroark, Tapu Bulu Vigavolt, Metagross GX and the Sijuai Ninetales. Other than that, all the rest are tier 2 or 3. Uh, uh, yeah, I was talking about Tapu Goku here. This will get better when uh, Burning Shadows gets released, so I'm also gonna do uh, more deck videos when uh, that set hits. And why is this deck a good deck? It's all about the ability Arrow Trail. We swap around with our uh, Tapu Kokos, heal off all the damage and uh, never die. That is basically the main point of the deck. And if we somehow cannot heal off that, all the damage, we Ninja Boy into Tauros and boom, bazillion damage on them with the Mad Bull GX. We're running 11 Lightning Energy together with 4 Max Elixir, so we try to get ourselves the combo here. Also 4 Trainers Mel, so the deck is kind of weak to Garbodor, so it's not that good at the moment, but it will get better with the uh, Supporter, Acerola and stuff. Okay, okay, we are also running the Aegis Paradise, uh, reducing damage. Hex Maniac, Ninja Boy is the lovely combo here. Let's say we have a our Raikou on the active position, or maybe let's say a, a little bit better. We have a Shaman on the active position, we don't want to start with it. Oh no, we start with Shaman, well... Out of nowhere, we can use the uh, Ninja Boy and swap it to something that we like. Really awesome combo. Also, also Jolteon is a really great against basic Pokemon. If we use this uh, Flash Ray attack, we cannot get hit by basics, so a lot of uh, Pokemon run basics. Nowadays, they are running through, uh, yeah, going through more a GX type evolution based set format, but uh, yeah, Jolteon is still great against certain matchups, and that's why it's on the list. Still a fun deck. It also won a league challenge, uh, one of my local league challenges, so it definitely says a lot about the deck. It's a top deck. Next up, Trevenant and Vileplume, a tier 3 deck. Has not been racking up tournaments uh, just because a lot of people are yeah know how to play against it. Trevenant deals uh, 30 damage for each trainer card. Talked about it before with Garbodor. Now we're playing the break one as well. With Silent Fair, we can swap, uh, actually put three damage counters on each of your uh, opponent's Pokemon, which is awesome. We tried to get something stuck with Lysander. We have the Valplume out with the Forest of Giant Plants. Your opponent cannot play Switch or uh, Escape Rope or Float Zone. Uh, yeah, they are sp pretty much stuck in the active position. We spread around damage and finish things off. So that is the main point of the deck. Two Shamans in here just to draw into those uh, cards to get ourselves the Valplume. This is a 3-3-3 line of Valplume. So a heavy Valplume line in here. Also 3 Float Zone to get that Valplume. Uh, equipped it with a Float Zone before. The, yeah, the Valplume is out, otherwise they will not work anymore. So a really fun deck to play. Tier 3 deck. Definitely test it out. Grass type is a nice type to be at the moment. As mentioned, we deal damage uh, super effective against Lapras, against Greninja, against Lycanroc, against Zygarde. I could go on. Grass is a nice type. Now, Turbo Darkrai. Turbo Darkrai uh, got a smack in the face with Guardians Rising when Field Blower hit the field. Because with that, now we have to run at least 4 XP share. We cannot run anymore. That would be Barbaric. We can also only play 4 copies of a single Pokemon card. Uh, in our deck, so uh, 4 XP shares uh, this, our opponent will get rid of them somehow, but XP share makes it so our darkness energies get preserved. So again, Dark Pulse deals uh, 20 damage plus 20 more for each uh, darkness energy attached to all of our Pokemon. Combine that with the Oblivion Wing uh, Evalton, and we still have a great deck, you should not be sleeping on this deck, it's a still a tier 2 deck. It, uh, yeah, got a slap in the face thanks to that uh, Field Blower getting rid of the XP shares, but with Max Elixir, and the addition of Ultra of the Moon, we still have a great deck. And that means we can swap our Eveltal to the active position, use Oblivion Wing, and if we're tired of it, we can just free retreat. We don't even need to attach another energy or float stones. So that's why this deck is still racking up some havoc. There's Pokemon Center Lady in here just for special conditions sake. Sometimes we want to heal up damage and uh, yeah, it uh, can be done or getting out of the special condition can also be done with this card. Yeah, 
let's move on here. The great thing about Darkrai is his resistance to uh, Psychic, which is great. We still have three more decks to cover. Let's check out Vespiquin. Vespiquin is great, and why is that? Well, there's no explanation. B Revenge deals 20 damage for, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, plus 10 more for each Pokemon in the discard. Zoroark, awesome Pokemon, and uh, Oranguru. The uh, evolutions are in, in here, for, uh, definitely the Vaporeon against the uh, uh, Volcanium matchup. And uh, the Flareon against the Grass that is being overplayed at the moment. We also have the Unknowns for draw support, getting them in the discard. So an awesome deck at the moment. Also, uh, the um, Michael Pramwa did really well with the Regionals. Actually became forced, first at wins, uh, yeah, Wisconsin with this deck. So yeah, don't sleep on this deck. It's a tier 1 deck. Next up, Volcanion dropped down to tier 2. Yeah, and why uh, did uh, the Volcanion drop to tier 2? I don't know. People started playing something else. Maybe it's weak to water. Water got Aqua Patch. People are afraid to play Volcanium. Maybe that is the reason. Flowstone uh, is not that good anymore. People play uh, Field Blower. They, uh, the the Volcanium gets stuck in the active position. Maybe that's why. The, that's the reason. So this deck runs on the uh, Sky Field, getting yourself the Hoopa, getting three G uh, EXs, Volcanium EXs on the field, and then start swipping damage with Power Heater, dealing 20 damage, and then. Getting some energy acceleration and as a bonus, so that is awesome. We have escape rope, we have switch, so no float stones. Uh, yeah, we have two of them, maybe you run three of them, but then again, field blower is around. That is, this is our switching matches. Methods. You could also run Olympia, also great to get out with the, the Tapu Lele, but Tapu Lele is mainly used to get ourselves the supporter Sycamore or N. Otherwise, Shaman is great. We can get, uh, we can swipe them and get rid of them with Skyfield once uh, your opponent uses a field blower, or uh, yeah, put something else on the stadium field. Really great deck as well. I uh, love playing with the Volcanion. The Tortonator is a nice bonus with Guardians Rising. Choice Band helps it out a lot with the mat. If we use the Choice Band and a Kukui, we get ourselves 180 damage with Volcanic Heat. Great, great number. Okay, Volcanion. Definitely a lot of people are still playing this. It's easy to get your hands on since Volcanion came as a 10 promo. And the last deck on the list is of course Zygarde. Ending with the Z from A to Z from Alolan Ninetales to Zygarde. I talk about a lot of decks, actually more than 20 just as a bonus. And this is definitely running the Carbing Break. As Energy Acceleration, definitely run that and the other uh, Lycanroc variant as well. This Carbing Break gives you, gives you Energy Acceleration against Energy Denial decks like Sylveon or Quad Lapras. It uses the Zygarde in this situation. We uh, attach one strong energy, a choice band, and boom, out of nowhere, if there is a stadium card in play, we are dealing, yeah, 90 damage. That two shots Pokemon, so that's why Zygarde is still doing a lot great. I think it's tier 3 to tier 2 deck. Maybe tier 3 deck. I would say tier 3 because it's weak to grass. Uh, Taku Lele, great. We have the Evolution Spray. Uh, to reuse our Lycan Rock's ability, Bloodthirsty Eyes, also that GX move will be the GX move of the game. One Silent Lap to slow your opponent down, it's always nice to do. Brocknet Hill is great, it serves us as the purpose of our Stadium card to deal more damage with Zygarde, and also gets out a uh, little Rock Rock from the deck every turn. Really awesome to use. Lily is also in here, you don't want to uh, discard everything at, at once, even though we do run Super Rod, and uh, yeah, maybe you could run the special charge, but yeah, we do run uh, a lot of uh, f fighting energies together with Max Elixir, so that is the main strategy here. A lot of energies quickly on the field and strike with Zygarde. Awesome like that. You could also use Max Elixir on Rockruff and uh, later evolve it to uh, the Lycanroc GX. The choice is up to you. So this is another great deck. I'm just gonna check it out here. We have uh, 13 energies just for Max Elixir. Then uh, the Evolution Spray is needs. Silent Lab is mentioned. Hex Maniac. Already a great card to shut down the abilities of the opponent. And then again, three choice band and two float zone. That seems to be the number I'm uh, more uh, comfortable with. Three choice band, two float zone. Yeah, it is what it is. So, guys, this was all the decks I uh, give you uh, today. Uh, uh, there's a ton, actually, more than 20 decks were shown in this video. I, if I forgot a few, definitely let me know. I uh, mentioned the honorable mention at the beginning of the video, so definitely Gyarados. It's something I uh, did not mention as well. Gyarados is definitely a, a top deck out there. Uh, should be a mentioning here. It did really well at a lot of regionals, but I don't have it on the online program. I don't have a deck list for it. So that's why it deserves a special uh, yeah, noteworthy mention here. If you enjoyed this incredibly long video, let me know in the comment section because yeah, I did my best to give you the yeah some neat deck list so that way you know what is in the standard format and you know what to expect at your tournament. Also, you can yeah pick a deck at random, try it out and see if it's fun for yourself to play at your next tournament. That is the reason I made this deck, made it before with the previous format uh, with the Sun and Moon. So this 
is an updated version for you guys, but this is only not the top 10 decks, but the top 20 decks just for you guys. If I forgot a deck that you say this is a top deck, Zandos TCG, you did not mention it, put it in the comment section, that's why there's a comment section at all. Discuss about what is your favorite deck, what is the best deck at the form and the format at the moment, and uh, what will you play next? Let me know. And that was it for another episode on my channel. If you enjoyed the video, definitely let me know by destroying the like button. Uh, yeah, that is always something uh, yeah, that I know. Uh, if you destroy the like button, I know that you're you watched the video and uh, you liked it that way uh, I know what content to make next and if you want to see some more informational videos there will be on the ending screen where you can check out the top banned cards actually the, all the banned cards throughout the years and the worst cards ever printed there's uh, some fun videos I did uh, really great reaction to them and uh, as a bonus maybe I can check out some pokey news that could be the case let's just uh, end this video with a blast uh, there is some pokey news here because uh, Let's just go on the World Wide Web and get yourself some more information. Uh, thinking about information, my computer is doing really weird stuff at the moment, but yeah, there is some Poké news. Pokémon GO uh, is getting an update where you can get raids. If you don't know what raids are, it's like a, a gathering where you destroy a Mega Boss, uh, like let, for example a Tyranitar with uh, 2500, uh, yeah, not 25, 25,000 uh, CP where you can just group together and uh, destroy it, so that is... Uh, yeah, I mentioned here on Poke Beach, so huge shout outs to Poke Beach for uh, giving us the information here. Another thing that you should know is that the Battle Arena decks, Black Curum versus White Curum, are out now and uh, they include a really nice, uh, uh, yeah, what well, that is it, the Sycamore Holographic, which is nice. Uh, there are some more cards here, some shiny cards, which we haven't seen before. We're gonna click on that. And uh, moving on, also the GX boxes of Pre Marina. Uh, the CGI and the Incineroar have been revealed, are actually released, and the Tapu Lele Pin collection as well. There's a shiny Arceus from Sun and Moon Tree, which we're also gonna check in this video. And uh, the Tapu Fini and Necro and Necrozma GX have been revealed in the English scans, we're not gonna check that. Also, Shining Legends releasing in America in October, so that is also something interesting. Oh, interesting. We're gonna start with the Arceus. We have a mythical Arceus, which you can see on the screen right now. Uh, it has an ability, uh, if this is your active Pokemon, prevents all effects of attacks, including damage done to it by your opponent's active uh, attack. So uh, your bench is safe for everything. So uh, that is uh, what Arceus does. Also, Ultimate Arrow deals 30 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon, so not bad at all, but uh, the price is overpriced. You need two DCEs to do that, while Tapu Koko can do it for a single one and deals 20 damage. I would rather use Tapu Koko twice and less. Yeah, you are afraid of being uh, sniped or something uh, with the uh, bench preventing ability. It's still a nice card though. Arceus has been a while since it was printed. We have a Mew, we have a, yeah, Mars Shadow. Mars Shadow is neat. Uh, yeah, when you play this Pokemon from your hand on your bench, both players shuffle their hand into their deck and draw four cards. Really great early game. We have a Ho-Oh. If this Pokemon is your active Pokemon and uh, yeah, is knocked out uh, from your opponent's attack, move two basic Pokemon, uh, two basic energies. From this Pokemon to the bench Pokemon, neat. Uh, yeah, there are some other shinies. Mew, only 30 HP, what the hell? Search your deck for two energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon in any way lack. Like. Energy acceleration for everyone that wants it, I guess. Uh, lastly, yeah, these are the shiny collection coming to October. Okay, good to know. And that's it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, destroy the like button as mentioned before. And I'll be seeing you guys soon enough with more trading card game videos. I'm out. This was Zapdos TCG. Have a wonderful day. And uh, hopefully this video wasn't too long, but you got the information regardless. I'm out. Peace out.